D-Day does not stand for Doomsday or Destruction Day. And no, Plan A, B, and C didn't fail, leaving Plan D. The D in D-Day actually stands for Day. The Allies plan to invade German-occupied France on D-Day on H-Hour. There have been quite a few D-Days in American military history, but the name stuck with this one because it was the largest amphibious attack in the history of the world. Pilgrims didn't dress like this at all. They probably looked more like this. Buckle hats didn't come into fashion until later, and they really only wore black and white on Sundays. Polar Beer did not actually shout, the British are coming, the British are coming. There were still way too many colonists loyal to the crown living in the countryside. He also did not make it to Concord to warn the Patriots. He was captured and questioned at gunpoint while his friend Samuel Prescott escaped by jumping a wall with his horse. Prescott is actually the one that made it all the way to Concord. George Washington never cut down a cherry tree. The story was made up by a biographer to help sell more books after his death. He also didn't have wooden teeth. Dental hygiene was not the best in the late 1700s, and Washington, like many Americans, had false teeth. His dentures were made of a mixture of ivory, gold, and lead. Despite what Disney told millions of children, John Smith and Pocahontas were never romantic. Pocahontas was only 10 when John Smith arrived in the Americas. She did, however, later marry John Rolfe, the Englishman who saved Jamestown by bringing tobacco. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free all the slaves. It only symbolically freed the slaves in the Confederacy. The border states of Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware remained in the Union and were allowed to keep their slaves until the 13th Amendment was passed in 1865. John Hancock did not boldly sign the Declaration of Independence, larger than everyone else, to mock the King of England. He signed first because he was president of the Continental Congress, and his larger-than-life signature can actually be seen in many other documents. This famous image shows Robert E. Lee surrendering to Ulysses S. Grant to end the American Civil War in Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia. What most people don't realize is that Appomattox Courthouse is the name of the city, not the building. The building is actually the McLean House in the city of Appomattox.